Hey guys, Pug Weasel with another Preppers You Have It Wrong series video. Uh, today's topic is the uh, I want to I want to dispel the myth that police officers and National Guard will simply desert, walk off the job in a uh, post-apocalyptic uh, shit hit the fan type of situation, where uh, it seems like. Uh, people just think that they're just going to stop existing and they're going to stop working and just go to their house and only protect their family. And I want to I want to argue against that. Uh, basically, there's there's a bunch of things that you have to understand. I mean, don't be wrong. There there could be some catastrophic thing that happened where most of us die anyway. Uh, you know, we get hit by a meteor, uh, nuclear bombs where we all most of us die. I suppose there may be some situation like that where. Uh, we would lose our National Guard uh, assistance and we lose our police assistant and we might even lose our political system. But many of the theories of preppers as to what's going to occur that's going to cause a shit hit the fan situation are things like uh, hyperinflation and, uh, you know, a lesser uh, natural disaster uh, as well as super high gas prices. Uh, things of that nature. In these situations, in the vast majority of, of prepper theory uh, scenarios for shit hit the fan, police are going to stay on the job. Police are going to stay on the job because uh, they know that keeping society together is in fact the safest thing for their own family. Just being at their house to, with, with one shotgun is not the safest way to keep their family in good shape, but in fact to make sure society doesn't actually break down is the safest thing to do for their own family. So they're going to stay on the job. Uh, if you look at the National Guard, you know, why would they stop doing what they're doing when rebuilding society, keeping society from becoming violent uh, upon itself actually keeps their families, again, keeps their own families safer? when they're out doing their duty and I think that's how soldiers who go overseas to fight wars think about it I think that's what National Guard people uh, think about when they're signing up and then doing their jobs where they go they would hope that someone would be helping them if they were in the middle of that natural disaster so they go there and they help out themselves uh, in situations like for instance Katrina so I disagree that that there's going to be some scenario going forward, even if we have a natural disaster, even if we have a hyperinflation situation, uh, even if we have a, a super high gas price situation uh, where armed forces and uh, police officers just drop their, their uh, badges and, and run home to, do, to just take care of their own family. I think they're going to continue to do their duty and I think there's a lot of prepper theories out there that count, I won't say count because that's not really the right way to say it, but that ex have an expectation that really good people who have taken an oath to do their jobs are going to just forget those oaths and walk away. Another thing is that I don't hear preppers ever talk about is the fact that governmental systems are set up to uh, continue to exist in two different ways. One, uh, and that is, for instance, if you look at the national system where if the president is somehow killed, the vice president automatically becomes president. If the vice president is somehow killed, the speaker of the house becomes president, and so on and so forth down the line. I believe they have eight, nine levels of that. Even in states, they have these kinds of systems set up so that if the governor is killed, that uh, someone takes over for that person automatically it becomes the authority that the gov has the authority that the governor had. Uh, and you can find that in, in governments all, all the way down to uh, hamlets and, and uh, villages in, state, in states where they have those. So you've got these systems that are set up to uh, help the government to continue on. Further, Constitution is written in a way that says uh, there is no time where there's no rule of law. The Constitution remains intact even if our whole system breaks down so that there is a way to rebuild society very quickly uh, 
with a democratic process and voting, so on and so forth. And the idea that, again, a, a hyperinflation situation, uh, you know, to believe a hyperinflation situation is somehow going to lead to the, the shit hit the fan or without rule of law, you have to believe that people are going to rise up against their own government and uh, decide that killing people is no longer against the law, that murder's okay, and, 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 and that's, that's a far-fetched idea for something like hyperinflation. Uh, I think if your, your idea about what's going to happen in the world is more catastrophic, more very much, you know, apocalyptic, then maybe, you know, you could have that argument. But uh, hyperinflation, really high gas prices, uh, a natural disaster that maybe even uh, causes a whole coastline of the United States to be in trouble, these aren't going to cause uh, situations where police and, and guard walk away from their jobs. So I think that people need to uh, take a serious look at that if that's one of their belief systems that they are looking for the government to break down and them to have to be their own police force, uh, have to be their own national guard, and no longer have to respect the rule of law. Because the rule of law doesn't go away just because there's a disaster. It goes away when this country has actually been toppled and, and that will require another country or a civil war. So think about it.